the People's Democratic Party's Board of Trustees has opposed moves to sack the Uche Seconders-led Working Committee and replace it with an interim caretaker committee. It was gathered that at a meeting which started at 11 a.m. and presided over by the board chairman, Senator Walid Jibrin, the members insisted that the national chairman, Uche Seconders, should be allowed to complete his tenure, which would soon end. It was also learned that the party leaders faulted what they termed as uncomplimentary remarks by um, its members. It had been reported that the national chairman was battling to retain his position as Wiki spearheaded moves to ensure his removal before the party's National Executive Council meeting and the National Convention. Well, joining us to discuss this is uh, political analyst Biodo Shomi and Baba Shola Adegui. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting us. I'm guessing this has to be the most discussed conversation. I mean, the PDP and its infighting and all of the drama that's been happening. And we can say the same for the opposition also, I mean, for the APC. But today we're talking about the PDP. Let's start by um, looking at the drama that ensued over um, the past few days. And the people who moved from the party, the members of the um, BOT who moved to the APC. In fact, they first resigned and then moved to the APC. One person has moved to the APC. But I, I want to start with you, uh, Biaru. What do you make of this drama? A lot of people have pond, uh, you know, posited that this is, uh, you know, body movements as everybody's making preparations for 2023. But I'm sure that you think it's different. Well, there are different factors responsible for people moving at different points in time. First, you have those who felt um, they've lost out of the political economy that they always lived on. Um, out of government for over two years, they decided to uh, move to the ruling party uh, to still have some um, income. And you have the second category of people. Uh, these are people who have um, problems or who think they are politically exposed you know to the efcc and they felt look the best way is to join the ruling party just with the prone and your sins will be forgiven you know and you have this um thought um a very rare uh, situation which is the current resignation and uh, directly the re -re -re resignation of the uh, deputies you know, of um, pdp what people are looking at is just the issue of issue of um, Wiki. I don't believe it's actually Wiki alone in that game. Uh, what happened is they may have resolved some of the problems. Each of those deputies are loyal to different people within the political party. You know, which I there are those of them loyal to um, possible pa uh, past um, secretary of the party and you know past national officials. So they are the ones at work. You know, jostling and trying to. Um, situate themselves in a way that they will be able to influence the outcome of the convention, which is to elect a chairman that will supervise the election of um, the national convention that will produce uh, the presidential candidate. So this game is not just about Wiki. Wiki on his own part is quite very articulate, very forceful and coming out strongly, mm -hmm. you know, against them, which is secondos. But he's not the only one in the game. You know, mm. there are other actors in that game uh, who, one way or the other, decided uh, they breached the truce and called their boys, you know, to again resume their post as uh, deputy officers of the party. So these are these the, the unforeseen on the unseen hand plus the seen hand, which is the same hand, mm. and that is what is going on. Unfortunately, um, they are not likely going to have their way because which is second dozen has barely four months to go. Uh, mm. from office. It's the wrong time to move to move them. But politically speaking, it's the right time because the whole idea is to set up a uh, convention committee, you know, that will see to the election of new chairman. Obviously, which is secondos may would want to return as a national chair. So what they may have reached behind the scenes settlement about which is secondos not you know going for another time. Uh, just buying out at that um, convention and allow a new person to be the chairman. No one knows until when it all plays out clearly. Let me come to you, Babashala. Um, 
It's been reported that Second Duce's rivals reasoned that the national chairman would install his loyalists, you know, as members of the convention committee, and, and this, this would pave way for his re-election. Uh, the PDP, on the other hand, has all, always made a big show of transparency during the elections over the years. And um, is this possible that the issue is a result of lack of transparency or internal democracy? Um, just like um, show me has said, it, could it be much more than the hand of Esau in this particular matter? Well, uh, there is nothing wrong in Uche Secondos are cutting his loyal list. If the national chairman and he has the game, and he knows how to play his game very well, definitely he can, he can get his loyal list to the national convention and get himself re-elected. Um, on PTB, sometimes I had myself if PDP is actually still existing in Nigeria. Because it's like PDP is failing as an opposition, just like the way the party failed when they were in the government, uh, in, in, in charge of the government of Nigeria. Because sometimes I ask myself, if PDP is actually seeing what is happening and uh, listening or hearing to the, uh, listening to the yells of, uh, of the masses. So for me, Uche Secondo's administrative has not been actually performing the way if an opposition party should be performing. I have to be sincere with you, I'm not a member of PDP, I am not a member of APC. I am saying this as a neutral man that is looking at it from the, an objective way. From the performance basis, I would say the national chairman has failed and the, the, the whole executive, I mean the national executive of that party needs to be uh, we shall food. I don't um, understand. What exactly do you expect the PDP to do? Because again, this is not the UK where you have a shadow minister, a shadow this, or a shadow government. You don't have that. You just play plain opposition politics. And and I'm not in any way trying to speak for the PDP, but let me just play the devil's advocate. They've been speaking up a lot about you know the insecurity in the country and a couple of other things. But what exactly do you think the PDP is not doing that you that makes you feel that they have failed? When the PC was in opposition, we all know the game APC played. And we all knew there was an opposition in existence before 2015. But immediately after 2015, when APDB permitted or allowed APC to come into them by disintegrating the party, arresting some of their members and some of their members crossing into the APC, you see, PDP went down. The last time I can talk about PDP being a position, that was when Olise, uh, Olisa Metsu was the, was, was the spokesman for the power party, political party. Immediately that man was arrested, uh, uh, was arrested and was harried. It was like PDP just went silent. They are not acting, they are not, and it's like, they are just there, well, let, let us see the opportunity we are looking for, let us grab the party. They don't really understand what position, being an opposition is, and that is what is killing the PDP. And I'm very sure it's because of 2020, uh, 2023 now, at Uike and the Zonkakos, and now looking for an opportunity to put aside this administrative, then bring in a new government as in a new set of executives that will hold the party. So that in 2023, they will not shortfall of what they've already, uh, uh, what have already shortfallen of again. Hmm. So although Wike and the other group, they are not going through it, they are not going through it the way they should go through it. Definitely, I think uh, Uche Secondos was uh, elected three years ago before the 2019 election for the, um, their convention. And according to their, politics, according to their party constitution, he should be the national chairman for four years. The okay. question is, have any of them followed the process laid down by their, by their, by their, their PDP constitution in the removal of any executive uh, member? Hmm. Well, that's a great question. I wish that they were here to answer it. But let me go, come back to you, um, show me. Um, there have been... Um, I want to quote something that happened in 2017 uh, ahead of the PDP National Convention. Uh, governor Wiki, the same Governor Wiki that's being fingered to be against Uche Secondus, who is also his kinsman, um, 
actually had said that he expressed absolute confidence uh, in the candidature of Uche Secondus. How did that change in the space of less than four years? I mean, and, and the fact that he seems to be the one who everybody's pointing to as one who wants to remove Uche Secondus, and it's a two-pronged question. Do you think that Governor Wiki has an interest in that position personally, or the, whoever he decides to put there might just help him in whatever ambition he has going forward? Yeah, no doubt the chairman of any political party is a very powerful man. Um, the chairman can influence a lot of things. He has a major role to play, not only in appointing those who will be who will conduct elections and influence the process. He is also so important that he could make or mar the ambition of any politician if he chooses you know, um, not to be neutral um, in the game. Wiki has, has been rumored for some time now to have a vice presidential ambition. Obviously, um, we have had of different tickets. You know, Wiki, Tambuwal, at the point we had about Wiki, um, Atiku, we once had about, you know, different um, uh, insinuations about um, uh, Wiki's ambition. But the ambition has always been as rumored, only at the level of vice presidential candidate. But he is probably one of the most powerful people in PDP today. If you take away Atiku and Bukola Saraki, probably Wiki is next. So he has a clout um, to pursue his own interests, um, depending on um, where, who he perceives to be a stumbling block. In the case of Secondos, Secondos has he was a very clear lie, even though in terms of seniority, which is Secondos was a senior in politics. But they were both allies until uh, when Wiki's um, uh, direction, you know, his trajectory uh, on 2023 came into play. So, and Wiki, that we all know, <laughs> was part with anybody the moment his interest is at stake. So, he's a man very determined, you know, very committed to his own cause. And does not mind stepping on anybody's toes, you know, to achieve his own goal. And that is VK. Uh, some people will say it's ruthless. I would say it's um, very, very determined. So the idea that VK actually moved against Uchich Secondos should not surprise anyone. He will move against any ally if his own interest is at stake. At least that's the impression which um, uh, many political pundits, you know, have about um, uh, VK. And there's nothing wrong with that, basically, because it's all about his own personal interest. Most of the politi politicians in Nigeria today are there because of their interest, not really because um, of the people. It's always a, a mouth saying thing to say that we want to serve the electorate. About. They're just mere slogans. We don't see that in reality, in practice, when they're in political power. So quite often, it has always been very self-serving, self-seeking uh, moves you know, within all the political parties, you know, including the APC. So what I see happening clearly is that they probably must have reached the troops, you know, to encourage um, Wiki to abandon the course of removing second doors and Wiki and his allies, and then allow second doors um, to, to fade away at the next election uh, and pay you, you know, for a new chairman to emerge. It will be difficult for PDP, you know, with this crisis not to implode again if you know secondos is allowed to continue at the next election because at the next time convention because it will only cause a major crisis within the party but 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 looking at the fact that in the party you have three strong men the ones that we know the obvious three strong men uh, and they all differently have interests and these interests might span even through presidency and all of that and out of the three strong men two have run for presidency uh, at least one has run for it maybe three times and, and the other once. Um, again, uh, we see Bukala Saraki trying to reunite the party. We see Atiku reconciling with Wike, uh, trying to form a formidable front. But it, it's still not stopping the movement from the PDP to the APC. Now, the PDP had previously said that the APC would probably disintegrate before 2023, but we're seeing the same thing happen 
for the PDP, they're collapsing like a house of cards faster than their opponents, even though those people also have their own internal party crisis. As to, it's also leadership related. And these are the two main political parties in Nigeria. I'm going somewhere. The former INEC boss had come out saying that these two political parties have taken Nigerians for granted for so long and that they are um, disintegrating and that Nigerians should be looking elsewhere. Um, and so for the PDP, is there any survival of any sorts in the radar for them come 2023 with all that's been happening? The governors have left, members of the National Assembly have left, and now board of trustee members. What is left of the PDP? Well, the, the PDP made a fundamental mistake, you know, after the last election. It was a big miscalculation on their part. What they should have done was to rebrand um, away from PDP. Uh, don't forget that uh, the party was badly tarnished because people saw it as a party of losers. One way or the other, APC propaganda machine uh, was able to make a major dent on their political fortune. They lost power. What one would have expected is for PDP to the brand itself, transform itself, and abandon the name PD. The, 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 there's a clear reason for that, which is nobody will be able to, you know, point to the fact that they were in power and they were so corrupt. Don't forget, members of the same PDP have moved to APC. Uh, the, the same corrupt PDP, they are now in APC. So if they are brand rebranded, it will have been difficult for people to point to them and tarnish uh, their image the way it's been done currently. Uh, but that notwithstanding, that notwithstanding that error, um, it is not only the PDP, APC, both parties are likely going to implode. Currently, we see movement from more movement from PDP to APC. But what would happen after the APC uh, convention and primary uh, primary elections? No one knows. You know, once um, the key political actors within the APC, uh, you know participate in that term, uh, primaries. You know, one person will win at the end of the day. So what would happen? People are projecting that APC is likely going to go. In fact, APC is a more difficult situation compared to PDP. Don't forget the Southwest governors have made a clear demand that, look, the next leadership should come from Southwest. The North is saying, no, we're still going to continue in power. So we are faced with a very difficult situation. Maybe Atari Jega, the former INEC boss, may be right that we probably we may need to look elsewhere for a third um, party. So out of what is going on, a PDP may not survive after the convention. So also APC may not survive. We are likely going to see you know, people moving from both political parties and probably join up or team up with a new political party uh, to challenge, to present a third force you know, to PDP and APC. That is a likely tra trajectory you know, that I can see on this Babashala, this means that obviously um, we're going to have another case of the P APC, how the APC came about. We remember that it was, you know, a group of po political parties coming together to form the APC. Now, the plan that they had in mind, um, we do not know if it, it went beyond just on seating uh, the sitting president at the time. Now, he's also positing that that might happen and people might have to look elsewhere. But we also see that even the other political parties that are not as big as the PDP or the APC are facing the same internal crisis. Look at APGA. It's very difficult for a party like APGA, who, who just has, it's become a one-state party, to even get its act together. So what's stopping these other politicians who, do not, who, are, who might be aggrieved at the end of the day after the convention of all the, the big parties? What stops them from going into those small parties and repeating the same cycle all over again? Okay. Um, nobody can actually predict accurately what will happen in APC after their national convention. But we can, put, we can project that definitely there will be crisis and a lot of people will want to move out of the political party to go to a PDP. A strong and a very serious politician in either APC or PDP will not want to go to any of the political parties, any of the, uh, the small political parties. Why? Because they will look at the chances they have in such political party. If the chances are not there for them, 
they'd rather be where they are or move to another strong uh, political party than an unknown or, or a, 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 a small political party. So for me, any for me in after 2022 because. Because I'm very sure the convention will start next year in respect of the each political party convention, uh, in respect of the national executive, because it is the national executive that will actually determine the next step that political party will take. If the national executive as the national chairman as not enough, I can tell you they will not want to give the president presidential ticket to a not another. So they will now go to the Saturn and give the presidential ticket. So as a result of that, most politicians who are eyeing or looking forward. Hello? Hello? Go ahead, we can hear you. Okay. Most politicians who are high or looking forward to a particular position, either in the national executive or in the, uh, in the political party or for election purpose, they will now look for how to create crisis in APC in order to either get the image of APC As by the political party to PDP. Now, okay. it's now left for PDP to determine if they are strong enough to absorb them. What do I mean by being strong enough? Will PDP be able to compromise its own structure for the purpose of those that are becoming him? For anyone who is going to Abga, we only know Abga in another state. I don't think Abga is in another state apart from Hanamba state. Anambra, will yes. anyone go to Abga? Will anyone go to YPP? Now, anyone that go to either of them will be ready to spend more in those political party for such person to be relevant. So let's wait for 2022 for us to see the national convention and determine what will happen next. Okay. Well, what happens in 2023 remains to be seen. Biodo Shomi and uh, Baba Shala Adibui, our political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now to go over the big stories of Plus Politics for the week. And when we return, I will give you my take. As a nation, we ought to work on our entire, the fabric of what we do. Change is not just about uh, the words, it's about what we do. And change is always a painful process. Even within the All Progressive Congress, we have to battle and struggle for change. We cannot just say that because we're a party committed to change, Therefore, everything will change automatically. No. But why, is why a promise something process. that you do not have? You obviously cannot give what you do not have. You're battling for change. But then you promise to give change. So why promise what you do not have? Again, when you keep talking, I mean, I, do, I totally agree with the fact that, yes, we as a society need to um, work to change, you know, the, the course of things. But what I, whatever happened to leading by examples, we're the ones who are following, we're the led. If the people who are leading us are making promises, they should be at least able to keep some of those promises so that we can at least have some level of trust. But there seems to be none of that in play. No, that, that, that you're, not, you're, not being, you're not being factual, and you're also not being fair. First of all, the All Progressives Congress has done a lot as a government to try to bring change to the political process in this country. There's no denying that. The whole issue of introducing uh, direct primaries as an option to ensure fairness and all that is something that this party has championed. But what I'm saying is that the All Progressives Congress is a political party. Magnus Abe is an individual. So if the party says something and Magnus Abe gets up to go and sabotage what the party has uh, set out to do, or do something different. These are individual actors across the country. Let's ex assess, you know, the, the APC right now, because we just finished talking about the PDP and the internal crisis that they're facing. Even at that, even at the fact that the APC is having internal crisis, we still see people leaving the PDP to the APC. And I have asked this question over and over again. 
will the APC be able to survive 2023? Because many pundits have said uh, that the foundation of the APC was not built on solid ground. Where do you stand on this? Okay, so um, I think that um, what is happening now, the kernel of this issue is in this recent judgment, this recent Supreme Court judgment, um, this recent Supreme Court judgment that he said um, just very narrowly on technicality to the to the hands of the current on the state governor. And um, all of a sudden, the foundation doesn't look so, so solid, uh, you know, coming from where... Um, uh, political actors in the APC are looking at it. Now, why are the PDP people, and look, it's a game, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a game of politics, pure politics. Previously, before that, um, before that particular court judgment, you had seen that some of the PDP, you had a PDP governor who had become, and some uh, 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 PDP governor who had become, and some PDP um, members who had also become. But what has happened with this judgment now is that all of a sudden, with the faint um, four to three, right? Narrow split, split in between that judgment uh, in favor. And the issue that brings to bear the legality of the current um, caretaker committee as against having a democratically a democratic structure in place to have in have the uh, power to um, appoint or sorry, or sorry to nominate governorships or across board. What it has done is that it has given them a fear that. If they go ahead with the World Congress um, and they continue to go ahead with the major elections, um, I mean, anybody can come out and take them to court. Um, the fact that we have insecurity and people are dying every day, the numbers have become just, you know, you just hear that 10, 100 are dead, and then you say, oh, okay. Um, so should we be, should we jettison the idea of Twitter ever coming back? Um, should we also close our eyes to the fact that this is one of the many things that government has done without legal backing? For me, everything is symbolic, you see. So it's all about symbolism. What does a certain action represent? And it's quite easy to say that they're bigger issues. And I think that's always been the problem with Nigeria. Every time that there is something to consider, we always say, oh, there's a bigger issue. There's something else to deal with. This is not as big as then we compare to the issues. And we forget that everything is a spiral and a reflection of the very next action you're taking. Let's look at symbolism, for instance. Banning Twitter is a space where people could speak freely and criticize government and the president is akin to shutting down a newspaper because it has so many opinion pages and half of the opinion pages don't make you look good. As a nation, Thank you for watching. Have a good evening. It's been Plus Politics. I am Mariana Cole.